Our world is a scary place and sometimes it benefits us to pretend that we're bigger than we are to scare off predators. In our vast ocean-like network, puffer fish blow up and then you see, oh my god, that's big, oh, I'm out of here. That's what Sony's just done with the FX30 pretending to be an APS-C sensor. Let's talk about it. All I want is the perfect camera. All I want is the perfect camera. So you may be excited, Sony FX30, APS-C sensor. Sony finally cares about APS-C again. They give us something. I just want to curb your enthusiasm, knock you down a notch, and see, is it better than the Fuji X-H2S? A lot cheaper, matching the specs. Canon R7, would that be making you happy? I doubt it. Or the Panasonic GH6, the smaller sensor, or is it? Oh, we'll get to that. If you want to do 4K 120p, this FX30, 1.62 times extra crop, that brings you to a 2.43 times crop. Panasonic GH6, no crop, but tiny micro loser sensor, two times crop, bigger than this. 43% smaller, don't quote me on that, than the GH6, this new APS-C, if you want to do slow-mo, which you should. When you go to 240p, it's a little better, 1.38 times crop, total full frame equivalent 2.07 times. If you bring Fuji into the equation, they're the biggest of all, 1.935 times full frame crop. So as you're seeing so far, Fuji is the biggest true sensor. They didn't feel like lying to you. Next would be Panasonic. Wow, that's weird. And then Sony, and then for some reason, Canon coming in with a 2.9 times crop in 4K 60, not even doing 120, but we're used to that. We're used to Canon being behind the times in the specs, and then eventually they catch up. In three years, they're doing 4K 120 beat in no time. So initially I was thinking this FX30, it's like, damn, those are some nice specs. I mean, I have the 200 to 600 lens. I love that thing. Get this body now, boom, dedicated wildlife system. Where's my viewfinder? Why did, why? Every time, there's always some deal breaking flaw on purpose. Just, sorry, did you need that? Yeah, we did. You can't see anything. Now you have to rely on these old Sony Kodak relationship screens that are still the same ones. Give me three million dots. Calm down. It might be usable. I don't know. Sometimes I use the back screen on the A7S III out for wildlife. It's somewhat doable. Autofocusing is like, okay. So maybe I'm bitching for no reason. But what I don't understand is why isn't the stabilization better? You have a much smaller sensor now, and it's like the same level, if not worse, than the A7S III from what I've seen. I don't get it. I, I thought you just, your full frame, tiny mount, it couldn't move much in your E-mount, full frame wise, corners cut off, so it's like, okay, we get it. We can only do this little bit. Now you don't have that problem, still the same. Sony has the best IBIS in the world with Boss camcorder style the whole lens loves you but from what i've seen from the fuji that's not good this will probably be better with the active stave especially for vlogging 100 percent better but active stave does nothing in the telephoto it makes things go haywire it's unusable so that sucks i'm trying to understand the decision to go with 26 megapixels why not just make an fx3 APS-C version, 12 megapixels still, and then I'm thinking you could be doubling the specs, like 4K 240p maybe, 1080p 480 frames per second. I feel like because you like more than doubled the megapixels, but the shrunken sensor, we gained nothing. It's just more megapixels, but you're not gonna need that for video. That's a photo thing. You want more megapixels for that, and this sucks, it has no viewfinder. No, no man. I'm just theorizing on potential deal breakers if you want a hybrid YouTube vlogging system with wildlife capabilities. I think you'll miss that viewfinder for the wildlife. For YouTube, you could get by, totally. That would be a decent priced 
YouTube system, little 11 mil 1.8 for the vlogs. And they're no 3D pop like you're witnessing. I doubt you're witnessing a damn thing right now. Sony lenses aren't known to be special, but they do still have a Zeiss partnership. And if you extend out there, 55 mil, something like that, you get your pop back. When it comes to what I would choose for wildlife, that Panasonic GH6 kind of excites me because they have that Leica 200 mil lens, the prime, and then there's like these pixel to pixel modes if you did want to crop, but you don't have to. 300 frames per second, beating the 240. But like, I feel like Sony will autofocus in all those modes, whereas Panasonic, you're manual focus only. Stabe should be better in Panty Boy. Color Science, Sony keeps tweaking it. It doesn't seem to have the swamp yellow disgusting greens anymore, so they're slowly working on it, adding crayons to their arsenal, making a coloring book for us, but I doubt it'll ever please anyone. Unlike Canon skin tones, pleasing the world one crayon at a time. Not that I'm filming on one with a gray cloudy window light. I like Sony better. That wasn't even my own thoughts. I just started talking. I was being I controlled like right there. Sony better. So like there's a lot of ups and downs. I feel like Fuji X-H2S will be the more cinema type cam, the F-Log2, maybe more, definitely more dynamic range, maybe more than Sony. Better colors, probably. Autofocus, still not quite as good, but decent. Animal Eye Detect, apparently. FX30, thanks for not giving that to those uh, A7S III owners. Who needs a firmware update, not me. Don't want focus breathing technology either. I hate that, love breathing. I feel like for YouTube videos and vlogging, I, I might lean Sony just for the stabe probably being a little better. The autofocus will be definitely slightly more reliable, but the colors of the Fuji might be more impressive. It's more artful, better hybrid maybe. Custom dials, I like those. I don't know about this FX3 body. That thing's weird, it's gray. Just keep in mind, just because this FX30 has 4K 120p and if it has autofocus in it, probably does, doesn't mean it's gonna work the same as the Sony A7S III would. So just because it has the same spec on the sheet, you're like, oh, okay, they both have that. Not always, just like the Canon R7, Animal Eye Detect, nowhere near as reliable as the R5, from what I've heard. Haven't tested anything. I review them still in my mind. So for YouTube, it's Sony or Fuji. Panasonic comes in edging them out for wildlife because there's no crop, but then they could crop, super crop, if you need that. Slower frame rates. Canon is left out pretty hard. They might have the best IBIS, that's it. They don't match the specs of anything. There's no 240 frames. There's no 4K 120p. And there's a huge crop in the 4K 60. Uh-oh. Oh boy, Canon. Now, as you may have noticed, the slight crop that was in before us is now vanished and we're showing you the full sensor. Crops can be good. They can be bad. I'm not saying don't get the camera based on crops. Nobody said the 4K 120p coming out of this FX30 is going to be bad because it's a smaller sensor readout. It's still 4K one-to-one -one type of shit. It might be fantastic. With the autofocus, it's hard to beat that. When I think of which one would I be most proud to own and feel like, you know what, I got a good deal here. Look at my specs, look at the results. I feel like you might want to lean Fuji. You might, but Sony, there's there's an upgrade path. I, I like the system. It's just likely disgusting color science and ignoring you in firmware updates for the future. Well, like what's up with all these new releases? A7 IV, this one, stuff coming soon that have better specs than the A7S III. Just little like focus breathing comp. I just want to try the thing once. Just one time.
I am focus guiding my way to, oh yes. Honestly, it's a pretty exciting release. Like finally Sony has an APS-C camera that's not 2012 technology. This, it was just like the A6300 over and over again with barely improvement, like autofocus improvements when it was already perfect. So annoying. I feel like they could have done more with a 12 megapixer, but they did not. And it still beats the competition probably. I don't know how you recommend a X-H2S, it's so much more expensive than this. Same shit, same specs. Better autofocus, better performance, better stape. Some prefer the colors. The Canon is last place, no matter what you want to do with it, I think. GH6, a little special. Wildlife lead, I think so. So get the GH6 for wildlife. Sony for YouTube. Fuji if you had hundreds of thousands of dollars in your pocket and then you just felt like leaving your children with nothing. I know that was a delayed sentence, but it came out. So what do you think? Is this enough? Does it appease the APS-C gods? I just, I feel like it should have leapfrogged full frame in some kind of spec. I feel like it doesn't. So I feel let down much like I did most of high school in dating life. <laughs> Thank you for buying a Camera Conspiracies t-shirt and a Sony FX30 through my affiliate links. It'll serve you better than it serves my mind. That's for sure. I'm gonna go. It's not a Canon. Canon color science. I wish I had.